Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is maximum of two values. Write a function named max that, that accepts two integer values as argument and returns the value that is the greater of the two. For example, if seven and 12 are passed as arguments to the function, the function should return 12. Use the function in a program that prompts the user to enter two integer values. The program should display the value that is the greater of the two. Okay. So we're going to create a function that's going to accept two arguments, one uh, first number and a second number, and it's going to return the uh, greater number, right? So we're going to ask the user to enter the two numbers, and then we're going to pass those two numbers in the function and have the function return the bigger number. Okay, so let's start creating the function. So let's define a function, let's call it find max. Oh, oh wait, it told us, it told us the name of the function, right? It said, <laughs> Write the function named max. All right, so let's call it max. <laughs> I did. I, I read that. I just read that. But anyway, <laughs> I guess I'm being stubborn. All right, so let's create a function called max. Define max. Max is going to accept two arguments. So I'm going to go ahead and define two parameters. And those two arguments are going to be the numbers that it's going to compare. All right, so let's create a uh, parameter for first number and second number. All right, so in the function, it's going to compare to see which one is greater, right? So let's say if, well, basically the, the purpose of this function is to return the bigger number, right? So if first number, right, if first number, let's see, if first number is greater than second number, right? Let's see, if first number is greater than second number, then what we want to do is to return first number, right? But what if first number is not, is not, is not greater than the second, second number? Then that, that means that the, the, let's see. So we want to see, so let's see something. Um, It's possible that the number can be equal, right? But you know, in this case, the, the question didn't really, you know, tackle that. So let's just ignore that. Or we can create something, you know, to uh, simulate that, you know, later on. But for now, if the first number is greater than the second number, return the first number. Else, then the second number is, is greater than the first number, right? So let's return the second number. So else, then go ahead and return the second number. Now, if the numbers are equal, well, when we are testing it, we are going to make sure we type in, you know, different numbers, not the same numbers, right? But then we can modify this program to handle you know, two equal signs, right? But the goal of this is just is, is to just return the max. All right, so else return um, second number. Oh, that means that means the second number is bigger than that. So yeah, so we're done with this one. Oops, this has to be on a different line. So else return colon here, and this has to be indented. All right. So that's what this function is going to do. It's going to take in two numbers, compare to see which one is bigger, and return it. If the first number is bigger, it's going to return it. Else the second number is bigger, so it's going to return the second number. Okay. And then now the question wants us to ask the user to type in two numbers. We can create a function for that as well. Let's create a function call and call it get numbers from user. You can you can make it short if you want, but I like long names. So it's fine. So get numbers from user. What we want to do is basically ask the user using the input function, please enter the first number, right? So let's say, please enter the first number. And we know the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user to type in something. And whatever the user is, uh, types, based on how the input function works, whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string. Even if the user types in a number, the way the input function works, it's, it's going to return that number as a string. So we have to convert it to a number first. In this case, we want to convert it to, um, well, let's convert it to a float. Should I, should we convert it to a float? Okay, let's convert it to a, a, an integer, just so we deal, we deal with integers, right? Let, let's restrict this program to integers. So we are com I'm going to call the int function and surround the input function parentheses meaning I'm basically converting everything that the input function is returning everything that the user has typed into an integer and then I'm going to store it in um, a variable called called user first number right user first number 
and then I'm going to do the same thing for user second number right and then change this to user second number and say please enter the second number also convert it to an integer and then when we are done in Python we can return two number two uh, more than more than one argument we can say return user first number comma user second number and when we are receiving it at the, on, on when, when, we are, when we call this method and we are receiving these values the, we have to also put we have to basically also store them store the, these values in two variables and they have to be in the same order so I'll show you an example so first of all let's also define a main method where we are going to run our program the main method is like this a function that should run when your program starts it's, it's the starting point that's where everything happens the main method is, is the main function is a function where we are going to call every other function in most programs the main function is the starting point of the program it runs is the first function that is that is run or that starts or that runs or that is called automatically or manually when the program starts <clears throat> so let's do let's let's do that too here let's create the main function and the first thing we want to do in our, with our program is to get numbers from user right so let's call the get numbers from user here when we call it it's going to ask the user for the two numbers and return it so in the main function let's create two variables that, that you know that that are going to store the user's first number and the user's second number respectively because it's returned in this order we also have to create variables in, you know that are going to receive the first and the second respectively so i'm going to create the same the same name doesn't matter user first number okay comma user second number is equal to get numbers from user get numbers from user is returning the first number and the second number I'm, I'm also going to store them here the first number and the second number respectively it doesn't matter if these names are the same it doesn't matter if this name is the same as this it doesn't matter if this name is the same as this because they are in two because they are in separate functions they are considered separate variables okay so even though they're the same name they are considered separate variables they, they are not the same because they are in separate um, sorry they're not the same because they are in separate functions okay you are considered different variables so you can use this the, the scope of these variables is only in main and the scope of these variables is only in get numbers from user right okay so once we have the two numbers we can now go ahead and call max right and max we know is going to t you know accept accept two numbers we have the two numbers here first number and the second oops and the second number and we know it's going to return okay we know it's going to return the bigger number so since it's returning it we can just print it out instead of you know storing it storing it in a var variable and printing it you can just print out the bigger number we can print it even with a message and say oops you can print it with a message and, and say so forget about this for now uh, this is th with this we know it's going to return the bigger number let's let's start by you know displaying a message and saying and say the bigger or the max or the biggest number or let's just say that um so let's pass in arguments into this print function and let's say hmm um well for now based on how we created a function let's just say the biggest number the biggest number or the, or the maximum number among or between um, between among i think is, you, you understand what i'm trying to say right among um or between all <laughs> yeah between i don't know i don't know what what, what the right word to use all right so the, the maximum number of or between <laughs> i'm sorry here okay i'm sorry i'm, I'm going to use myself the, mag the maximum number between all right and let's say so that's one argument so I'm going to put the comma here. So the, the maximum number between user first number here and user second number. 
well we have to create um, a good string right Th this is not this is not really going to um, display it well so what we want to display is the maximum number between this first number okay let's create another string and say and use a second number here with another comma here another string and say is and then this is the max as a last argument all right okay so now before I display anything I I'm exceeding this line over here I don't know if you can see it it's a very faint gray line here and this line is like a guideline to try to help me write 80 characters in a line or code 80 car characters in a line it's a Python standard to type 80 characters characters in a line so I have this line here as my guideline to help me with that so because I know I'm exceeding this I'm just going to break this line into two somewhere around here before you break any line in Python, you type in a backslash and you hit enter. So I've broken it into two. Same line, I've just broken it into two. Okay, so now we're done, right? We expect it to, to display it. Now we, we've we only defined the main, the main function. So we haven't called it because if we, as it stands, nothing is going to happen when we write, run the program. We've defined main, main is calling all the other methods. We need to call the main function so that everything else works. So I'm just going to call the main function this way. Okay, so stop this. I don't. I didn't even know it was running. Uh, stop it, and then now let's run this. It's going to require us to save it. I'm going to save it in the folder where I save all the Python programs, which is on the desktop. It's a shortcut over there. All right, so let's save it here. Create a new folder in Chapter Five. Call this um, max of two values. This doesn't hurt to to type the whole thing. <laughs> Maximum of two values. Create a folder for that. Did I? Yeah, I did. And then this, let's save this as the same thing. Maximum of two values. Dot pi. Make sure I'm saving it here. Okay. Now let's see if we have any errors. Let's oh, let's see if it's going to run. Okay. So please enter the first number. Let me just put a colon here just so we can see the difference. Stop this and, and hit and run this again. I'm going to enter three. Please enter the second number. I'm going to enter five. And now, now it says the maximum number between three and five is five. And, and that's correct. So it seems to be working fine. Let's try again. Let's type in 67 and then 234. And it says the, the maximum number between 67 and 200, 234 is 234. Let's switch it around and see if it works. Let's, let's, let's type 234 first and see if that works. And 67. So 234 first, 64 second, and it still says the maximum number between 234 and 64 is 234. So we can see that it's working, it's able to find the max. So that's good. The only thing I want to do is just to create, after d displaying these um, questions, some you know, sorts of a, uh, kind of a question, kind of questions, let's create a, a new line before we display the outputs, just so we, ha we can have some kind of spacing. Okay, so this is this is a method that is gets um, displaying a question, right? And this is the met the line that's displaying the output. Uh, there are a bunch of ways we can do this. Um, let me just let's just use um, one. Let, let's let's use one. We can use a new line character, but let's just let me show you one way to do that. Okay, so. I'm going to when you, when you create or call the print function this way and you tell it to print something like this and you run your program and you type in let's say three and four it's going to go ahead and display exactly what you've what you've told it to display we told it to display this so it's display this now by default the print function always ends with a new line meaning after displaying whatever you told it to display at the end of the line it moves the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after this print statement is displayed on that next line. So after displaying what you've told it to print, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after that print statement is displayed on this on this on this on that next line. That's how that's how the print function works by default. When you call the print function and you, you pass in nothing and you tell it to print nothing, it's still going to go ahead and print nothing on this line. Right? It's still going to go ahead and print nothing on this line. But it's, it's printing nothing, but by the, uh, because of the way the print function works, it always ends with a new line, meaning after printing whatever, whatever you've told it to print, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line. Now, in this case, 
<clears throat> in this case, we are telling it to print nothing. So it's going to print nothing, but we know that the print function by default always ends with a new line character or with a new line. So it's going to move the position from where it's at right now here to the next line. And anything that comes after that empty line is going to be displayed on that next line. So by default, or, or in essence, when you, when you call the print function and pass in nothing, you are basically displaying an empty line. So that's one way to fix it. So let's run this, and then try a couple of numbers. Let's say 56, 57. And now we can see there's a line here, and it tells you 56. The bigger number is 57. So this is working fine, um, and we're done. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them, as always. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a nice time. Have a, have a good sleep. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time with the next program. All right, then. Bye-bye.